7 GTS. The sweet spot of the range, as many Porsche diehards will tell you. In a lot of ways, this is the Goldilocks version of the 911. But more importantly, it is the best 911 to have fun on public roads. The GTS exemplifies Porsche's love affair with customer individualization. You can have your GTS as a hardtop, as a cabriolet, as a Targa. From there, you can choose all-wheel drive or rear-wheel drive, and there's a choice of a seven-speed manual or an eight-speed PDK. And if you're one of those customers that does want to take your GTS to a track, there's the option of carbon ceramic brakes and the lightweighting package, which helps save 55 pounds. But let's put all that aside for a second and just focus on this car. Cabriolet, rear-wheel drive, PDK. They should have just saved us all some time and called this the LA package, because it is perfect for a day like today. Just as before, the GTS has some noteworthy improvements over the Carrera S. The turbocharged flat six now makes 473 horsepower and 420 pound-feet. Porsche also reduced the sound deadening and added brakes from the 911 Turbo. The ride height is 10 millimeters lower and the sport exhaust is standard. Holy yellow, sorry, racing yellow, is one of many color options and the exterior is full of blacked out touches, including the font, front and rear lights, and engine grille slots. Add in black Turbo S wheels and you have a GTS. It's almost easy to gloss over that power figure because we know that faster 911s exist. But that 473 horsepower gets this GTS as equipped to 60 miles per hour in 3.2 seconds. And just to reaffirm for everybody who's jaded now by zero to 60 times in the twos, 3.2 is bananas. Just like this paint color. I get the feeling while driving this car that you just can't use anything more powerful on a public road. It just goes to waste. And yes, don't get me wrong, plenty of people use their GT3s on a daily basis, but that car has a drawback that's both a blessing and a curse. You have to rev it to high heaven to get the most out of it, which isn't always doable on a public road. Contrary to that, the GTS's power is accessible all over the rev range thanks to those turbochargers. Cherry picking from all over the 911 lineup makes for quite the driving experience. As a normal person who just happens to drive a lot of cars, I can't tell you that I can hear that there's less sound deadening or that I can feel a 10 millimeter difference in the ride height. But what I can tell you is that there are so many individual things that make the GTS a very special car to drive. Let's start with the sport exhaust. It comes standard on the GTS. You hit this little button right here and all of a sudden, there's a good amount of noise that comes through. People criticize the turbocharged flat sixes for not having enough oomph, enough theater compared to the GT3. But I'll tell you, especially with the top down, downshift here, there's a little bit of pop and crackle. And there's plenty going on, made that much better by just hitting this little button on the dash. And then of course, there's the eight-speed PDK. Now I know a lot of enthusiasts will wanna go for the manual, and I have no reason to tell you not to, but you shouldn't stray away from the automatic for any reason. Just like in other Porsche products, it's so easy to rifle through the gears. One down, two down, little bit of gas, and you could do three downshifts in a matter of just over a second. And then there's the brakes. I already mentioned that there are optional ceramics for the diehards, but let me tell you, this car comes standard with the brakes from the 911 Turbo just out of the box. So you're getting a lot more braking force than you would with a Carrera or a Carrera S. And as you slow the car down, it doesn't bite as hard as I thought it would on initial impact. But once you get past that late biting point, it's very easy to control the car down and they really haven't faded at all of course, we're just on the public roads right now. I know there is a place in the world for naturally aspirated flat sixes, but there is a heaping helping of turbo whooshes as soon as you put your foot in the gas, and it makes it that much more fun paired with this already great sport exhaust system. The GTS feels planted like few cars I've ever driven. You just get this confidence going into every corner that even if you come in a little too hot and fast, everything is so sorted and calm 
that it's gonna take care of you. I haven't wanted all wheel drive, not one time. I haven't wanted different tires or different brakes or a different calibrated steering rack. Everything just feels like it's in tune with what's around it. <laughs> and the car feels like it can go maximum attack on any sort of canyon road. And really, that's the best thing you can ask for, horsepower aside, when you're carving through a canyon, that it knows what it's doing and that you're able to trust it. The GTS does that for me without any doubt in my mind as a driver. The obvious drawback is the price. Starting at $149,500, our test car adds a healthy list of options, enough to balloon the cost to $175,000. After all, a Corvette convertible has a quicker on paper zero to 60 time and costs around 80 grand less. But you've heard that story before. When the biggest drawback I can come up with is the price, you know the car is something special. The GTS offers all the power, all the excitement you could ever want on the streets, and it makes a day like today <laughs> just about perfect. For me, this really is the king of the road cars. <laughs>